So after the hunt, you know, the other group could hear us shooting. They thought we were, you know, we had shot a hundred. We had shot so much, but turns out our group couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. And when asked about how bad the shooting was, I honestly said it was the worst I've ever seen. You know, in 20 plus years of duck hunting, hands down, the worst shooting ever, period. Thank God them dudes could cook. And they might not come back. So, you know, we had a good group. Eddie had some buddies come up from all over Louisiana, uh, South Mississippi. I had my dad and another buddy from West Point, and heck, it was a slew of folks. This weekend was why we built a camp house. Not necessarily to shoot a bunch of ducks, uh, but just to have a whole bunch of people there fellowshipping and having a good time. The next morning is a plus. Like, that goes the wrong way. I send Murray to go get decoys out of one hole and move them. They get none of that. So I'm like, there's no decoys out there. They're just all sitting in the boat. Can y'all take each other around? Like, yeah. Nobody said a word. I said, and I just told him on the way up here. I'm trying to give him a warm hat. <laughs> the text that I sent. So, and I had seen him with a hat. So most people were coming up Friday and uh, a couple of us decided to get there early to try to catch that front as it rolled through uh, Friday morning. And, you know, first thing, we had a good many ducks coming, but next thing you know, it started snowing. Wind started blowing 20 miles an hour and it felt like Saskatchewan here on the river. So Martin and Ellis, the Louisiana boys, they couldn't shoot worth a damn, but they could show cook. I mean, these boys was doing it in that kitchen. <laughs> You know, Ellis and Martin got three things in common. 
They can't shoot. They're both short, but they can show cook. Last weekend we had a big group in camp. I think it was what, t close to 20 people here. So uh, that many people we had to split up. And uh, so half went with me and Murray, and half went with Brooks. That was a freaking pile of them. <laughs> Hindsight looking back, I would say, yeah, we got guard hold. I think it was completely unintentional. I don't think that he, I don't think it was the intention was to guard hold us, especially not 10 of us. You know, I feel pretty sure he'd guard hold me and Murr, but you know, we had eight innocent folks with us. So, uh, you know, I don't think he would guard hold the entire group, but. It sure seemed that way. He went over there to the East Slough, uh, sent me and Blake on the river. Um, so he got us that day without a doubt. <laughs> We'll be getting where we're gonna get. <laughs> right on, good job. Not a ton of ducks flying, but the ones that are flying are laying in our decoys. Just these guys here ain't shot none of them. Just a bunch of missing going on, probably a case of shells. Apparently they're they're too close. We need to start shooting them out there at about 30 or 40. But at 10 and 20, this group ain't doing no good. <laughs> <laughs> By 8.30 or 9, I was expecting a text from Brooks, you know, me and Murray bring some more shells down there to where they was at. And um, that just wasn't the case. They had plenty of shells, they just didn't have any beads on the front of their shotgun, I guess. Brooks said they shot a case of shells. They were definitely burning some powder. They didn't shoot but 18 ducks. Some came in and we killed them. So despite, you know, our lackluster shooting ability, 
man, we had a ball. Ducks were coming in, doing it right, seeing that sun hit them as they broke down below those trees, uh, laughing about Edward's buddies not being able to hit anything. Uh, man, we, we, we had a ball. You can't pass up three cotton tops. <laughs> So when Harris and I bought the island four years ago, this weekend was what we envisioned. Having all these guys in camp, shooting ducks, fellowshipping, having a good time. I mean, this is it.